Hello everybody and welcome back to another Monday Rules episode. Now before I get started on today's episode, I'm going to make two short announcements. The first one is that I'm doing a Twitch giveaway stream on the 23rd of December at, well starting at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is 12 noon. We're going to be giving away some stuff including some uh, doubloons and premium time and I think a few premium ships. Maybe throw in a couple games in there as well. Um, so, you know, do make sure you jump on to my Twitch stream. The link to my Twitch is in the video description below. So, you know, jump on, say hi, and maybe grab yourself some stuff. And the second announcement is that this week there will not be a Monday Rules Challenge. It'll resume next week. Um, once again, it is the holidays, so, you know, I do want to spend just a little bit of time with family and friends who I've been somewhat neglecting past year so you know there is not going to be a challenge but there will be an actual match that I have to show you guys which actually was sent in by Lord Zath yeah this is a familiar name because Lord Zath has won a few things before and Lord Zath is in a Furtaka and I kind of expected a Furtaka to win and I'll explain why the Furtaka is a very very interesting tier 5 at least in my opinion She's got very, very troll armor. Her torpedoes aren't bad. They're actually the same torpedoes as you'll find on the Mutsuki at tier 6. But the armor, I think, is what sets the Furutaka apart from the other tier 5 cruisers. As you can tell, Lord Zath has pretty much YOLO rushed into a battleship. Uh, even managed to bounce a few shots. And I think he pretty much took minimal damage or bounced another shot there. Um... And there's battleships all around him. He's pretty much up here by himself. And he is just YOLOing like it's nobody's business. And taking hits like a champ as he goes. And I think this is what allows Lord Zath to basically play his Furutaka like a hyper-aggressive destroyer. Um, basically running around, getting up close, and torping the crap out of everything. I looked this up a little bit. Um, and the... So the closest thing we have right now to what World of Tanks has in terms of an armor inspector is something called, uh, I believe, Game Models 3D or something like that. And they give access to uh, all ship models up to about tier 6, and after that you got to pay. But um, when I looked it up, the very interesting thing about the Furutaka is if you look inside, if you point your bow in at the enemy, there is this piece of armor that's a 100 and something 105 millimeters in thickness I think that's protecting you and I think that's what causes a lot of the trollish bounces or just shells just do not doing a lot of damage and that's very different than the Omaha which doesn't have that and so you can Citadel uh, Omaha from the front but you find it quite difficult to do against the Furutaka anyways if we just talk about the battle I mean this battle is one of those battles where it's Amazing that Lord Zath is able to do what he does, but at the same time, a lot of it I think is is attributed to just how bad this enemy team was that just let him do this. Because Lord Zath has basically played this Furutaka battle like he was in a destroyer and just being hyper aggressive, rushing things down. There was a battleship over there that, at the first sign of the super aggressive Furutaka, just turned tail and ran for it, like. You're in a battleship. A Furutaka should be food for you, but nope. Battleship leaves, abandons the carrier to its fate, and for any of you who've ever played a Bogue, you know just how bad this Bogue is feeling right now, because there's nothing you can do. Your ship only goes, like, what, 16 and a half knots? Like, where are you going to run to? So, I mean, this poor Bogue can't do anything, can't really turn around. Battleship has just said, yep, see you later. I don't want to deal with this this crazy Furutaka here that's um, got identity issues and thinks that it's a destroyer. So, pff, Battleship's taken off. Poor Bogue. I, I just feel so bad for him. Like, even the strike that he tried on Lord Zath didn't work. Just because Lord Zath had turned into the island area and all of the torpedoes from that torpedo bomber landed in the island. So, ah, I just feel bad for him. And I mean, look at where Lord Zath is on the map. Just take a look at the map. He's basically at the positions where most destroyers end up, you know, hunting the carriers in the back of the map. Like, that's what destroyers do, and he's managed to do that just by YOLOing up in a Furutaka. 
Now that I think about it, I'm actually starting to wonder if that when they buff the Furutaka, they buffed it maybe a little bit too much. Maybe the Furutaka is just extremely durable now to the point where you can do this. I mean, now, now that I really, really think about it, I've had struggles lately as well when I run up against the Furutaka. I, even when I play battleships, I could fire what I think is a nice shot at the Citadel and like I don't hit anything. I don't know, that's something that maybe I should test a little bit more. I wonder how, like, because back then, the Fruit Taco was really, really bad, and Wargaming took the steps to buff it, and they, you know, improved its guns, improved everything. And I wonder if when they were improving stuff, they made the armor better as well. That's just an interesting thought, because if you watch this battle, I mean, you watch the next little bit, Lord Zap pretty much is able to chase down a battleship with almost near impunity. The battleship isn't able to really land any nice hits. And mind you, when the Furtaka is going to bow into you, it's not a big ship. Very, very, very small profile. Oh yeah, and of course, uh, the guns on it are still pretty lethal. So if you're in another cruiser, like that Murmansk earlier, you get shredded pretty quickly. Furtaka still has those great guns. And of course, if you're in destroyers, you're equally screwed. The torpedoes is also a very interesting thing, because initially the Furutaka didn't have such long-range torpedoes, but they buffed it and gave it Mitsuki torpedoes, so all of a sudden, it's got the longest-range torpedoes out of any Tier 5 cruiser in the game, and you really could just play it like it's a oversized, better-armored Mitsuki. Anyways, I'm going to speed the video up, just because what happens next after he kills the Izislav is that Lord Zath basically spends the next couple of minutes chasing down this battleship in an attempt to get a little bit more damage. Yep, because pretty much in this entire battle, Lord Zath has used his guns, I believe, twice. Once on the Murmansk and once on the Izislav. Everything else, all the other damage that he's managed to get so far has been with his torpedoes. Mind you, this challenge didn't get as many replays as I thought that, you know, would have come in. Just because, you yeah, know, it was a tier 5 challenge. I thought a lot of people would have actually tried it. But no, I was surprised that not a lot of people did. Um, and the ones that I did get had, you know, maybe one kill, 20,000 damage with their torpedoes. But nothing approaching this number at all. So can we say for sure what is the best tier 5 cruiser? Not really, at least not with any sort of statistics, but judging by how immune Lord Zath felt in this battle to everything that was shooting at him at tier 5, I think I'm pretty confident in saying that uh, the Furutaka is probably your best tier 5 uh, torpedo cruiser. And just because it's so durable. I mean, look at a tank hits here. It's taking hits from battleships. I mean, sure, the battleship is doing a little bit of damage. Look at that, like... That's just tanking hits like a boss. And that's what I'm talking about. Like, the forward hits on the bow section might not do all that much damage just because of that interesting chunk of armor at the front of the ship. Maybe that's just what's making the Furtaka a better frontal rushing things ship. Who knows? Anyways, finally gets close within a kilometer. Well, actually, just outside of a kilometer. The Miyogi turns, sensing that he's got a shot. But no luck at all, as three more torpedoes heads towards the Miyogi, and Lord Zath bags himself kill number six by this point in time. And with six kills, a whole bunch of torpedo hits, let's check out how much damage he's done. And here are the results. Ten torpedo hits, 101,726 damage with another 2,179 damage in flooding, making Lord Zath the clear winner of the Tier 5 Cruiser Torpedo Challenge. Base experience, 2,079, which is quite phenomenal. Uh, in fact, the next two people added together would almost barely surpass the amount of base experience that Lord Zath got. And of course, his results, 239,000 credits, 2,079 experience, because no premium. Uh, high caliber, one devastating strike, and a bunch of goodies there. So good job, Lord Zath. Keep an eye open on your email, and I'll be sending you some doubloons. Aside from all that, folks, I uh, hope you have a good holidays. Hope you have a lot of fun times with family and friends. And of course, remember, Monday Rules does resume next week on Monday. Aside from all that, take care, and have a safe and happy holidays.